Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel, Football Therapy. Hold on, let me just manifest myself. There I am. <laughs> what's going on? For those of you who listen and don't watch, you just missed a fun joke. Real fun. Real fun. Welcome back to the channel, Football Therapy, uh, with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series. Here on the channel, mate, every single day where I reflect on what's been said about Chelsea, giving you my opinion on it, but hey, more importantly, asking for yours, the collective fan opinion. What's going on, friends? Barcelona want Marcus Alonso. Real Madrid want Reese James. And loads of clubs want Mason Mount, apparently, too. But we are going to laugh at those reports, ladies and gentlemen. And talk about the new ownerships, priorities, signing up those fullbacks, but also a statement signing. Let me just sip my hot coffee because I forgot about it. Mm. Oh, it's still hot. Yeah, so there's been some news and reports. I'm not going to read off any of them, but talking about how um, Bowley, should he get to the new ownership over the line in the sale, should make a statement signing. People talking about Darwin Nunes, Harry Kane and stuff. We can talk about that as well. Settle in, get comfortable. Please do consider subscribing if you're new. We are closing in on 150,000 subscribers. I think it's literally like 800 away now, which is pretty wild. So we're like 149, 200 or something. Wow, we... Thank you, everyone. That's <clears throat> really kind of you. I do appreciate the community we've cultivated and built here on the channel. It's a wonderful and beautiful thing. We can uh, continue on being beautiful together, I suppose. So let's get into it today, the Chelsea news. Um, of course, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen, those of you those of you who have a presence on social media, Real Madrid fans are convinced that Reese James is signing for... Los Blancos that you know he's the, they're looking at his performances and they're like wow this guy's looking like the best right back in the world right now let me just move this arm back um he looks incredible and uh you know he's him and Benzema are swapping shirts Reese James is liking Real Madrid posts on Instagram the classic football fandom thing when you think what well, he's coming but a uh, report from Graham Bailey here um via Simon Phillips on Twitter one of Chelsea's top priorities once they have a new owner in place is to offer Reese James an improved contract. Now, two of Chelsea's most important players are Reese James and Mason Mount. Both, of course, signed deals, like first team deals, when Frank Lampard was appointed. So not actually that long ago, although time does seem to be moving quite fast. The problem is, he signed them both up saying, look, you're going to be playing in the Chelsea first team, so have a couple of new contracts, boys. But he gave them contracts of, you know, first team players that are prospects that have both just been on loans in the championship. Not like, all right, you both have started a Champions League final and won and you're like recognized as starters for England. <laughs> so like the, the deal that they originally signed in comparison to the deal they uh, they should have it is it, there's a big disparity and i guess real madrid and apparently made, like you know big clubs one of the mason mount three massive english clubs you'd have to imagine premier league clubs uh, and other European clubs want to Mason Mount and Reese James. Big clubs are l reportedly looking at Chelsea going, oh, they ain't got owners. Oh, you know, there's uncertainty. Rudiger and Christensen's leaving. Should we try and get the good ones? <laughs> Should we try and get Reese James and Mason Mount? Um, yeah, uh, you know, why everyone wants Reese James is obvious and apparent. He just dominates games. And uh, Mason Mount is you know, a manager's dream. Like, you know, Guardiola, a uh, Klopp would absolutely love Mason Mount. Even even if they, um, you know, he could sort of be a kind of like a Bernardo Silvery role for uh, Pep. Um, he'll probably love the way he presses and stuff. You know, they don't rely. He loves the way he'll score goals and assists. But, you know, Pep's all about system, function, pressing, intelligence. You know, Mount does all of that. Um, and, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't know if he'd play in the middle three for Klopp, actually, because they're kind of different profile of midfielders, and he wouldn't play in the front three for Klopp. But anyway, what I'm saying is, it's no surprise, there's no shock that big teams want these boys. But, you know, I wanted to react to it I, I, because um, it's in the media, and which is what we do. And I, I like the tweet here from my mate, Cy Phillips. He said, not even entertaining stories on Mason and Reese leaving. Of course they have interest. But if anyone thinks they'll be 
even entertaining leaving Chelsea right now, then you're on a different planet. New owners will 100% open contract talks and offer them what they deserve. So it's exactly what I said. You know, they, these guys started and won a Champions League final. Then they, they no longer should be on this, like, contract that reflects them coming back from championship loans. And, um, yeah, and long, you know, long may they reign at Chelsea. And, you know, there's shouts for both of them becoming captain. Reese James is obviously built like a tank, so he'd be great captain. But, you know, for me, I'd probably prefer Mason Mount purely because he's a bit of a shithouse on the pitch like Reese James. But Mason Mount talks a good game off the pitch and he, like, represents the club well. Like, when you hear a captain talking and speaking for his teammates and speaking for his club, he needs to speak well, like John Terry. like And like Cesar Spilicueta to a degree, even though he's a little bit more reserved. But he's intelligent and speaks well. Reese James is so shy. So shy off the pitch when you interview him, he's like, "Yeah, we played a good game." Like, I don't care about that. He's a beast on the pitch. That's all that matters to me. But when it comes to being a captain on and off the pitch, personally, I'd probably lean towards Mason Mount. Anyway, I've digressed slightly. Before we talk about new ownerships and uh, statement signings, which is the buzzword going around at the moment let's talk about Marcos Alonso, who I swear I heard somewhere. I didn't read it, but I heard someone referencing. So this may be incorrect that he said he'd love to stay at Chelsea and even retire at Chelsea, which is a nice sentiment, even if like, unrealistic. And then uh, we see this tweet from Fabrizio Romano, of course, transfer guru, who was following up on a previous tweet. He said, more on Marcus Alonso. He's respectful with Chelsea, but his priority is to come back to Spain this summer. Barcelona have already started direct contracts to explore intentions and a potential price. He is a serious candidate among three or four options for the new Barca left bank. So, you know, record scratch. <laughs> Stay at Chelsea, want to retire at Chelsea? My priority is to leave this summer. <laughs> like, I'm cool with it. By the way, like, big up Marcus Alonso, who has been really good at times this season. And I'm really thankful for that. But, like, I'm so, I'm still you know, absolutely cool with him leaving. He's going to be like 32. Um, and Barcelona, by the way, they want both our Spanish aging fullbacks in Azpilicueta, who, of course, we triggered the extra year, and Marcus Alonso. They would have bought both. And Gondreas Christensen. They would have taken three of a f- f- back four off Chelsea. Christensen in the middle, Azpilicueta at right back, and Marcus Alonso at left back. Everyone wants the Chelsea players off the exodus. But the truth is, they're getting these kind of players. Like, yes... Rudiger is a loss, but he he's getting absolutely insane money at Real Madrid. And like we've said, it was before Tuchel, he weren't all that. You know, he's going to be 30 next season. It's not really the end of the world. Andreas Christensen, he's had some awful performances this season. Yes, he's rated, but like no one's really going to cry for Andreas Christensen. That's, the tr- that's just the truth, man. Uh, and then you've got the aging Spanish fullbacks. Really... You know, it's the it's the wing but that are jewel in the crown in terms of our sort of defensive line, even though often they're wing backs, is Reese James and Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell's locked down on a big tasty contract that you know, he he's very happy with. Reese James will get a new one. And then, you know, we've got like defenders like Chalabon and Colwell to sort of like cultivate long term and then we're probably gonna buy some elite centre backs back there. But it's interesting <clears throat> I don't think anyone would particularly, even if you like are thankful and you know very respectful of what Marcus Alonso has done for Chelsea, which you should be. He scored so many big goals. Uh, he's taken a lot of crap and he's been really good at times, but he's also been profoundly awful. Let's not sugarcoat it and like have short-term memories. He's had some real stinking games, and you know under loads of managers. Not just like, you know, Lampard and he fell out of Lampard because he stopped running and, you know, whatever. And then there was that, that fallout. But across all managers, he's sort of key. Under Sari, you know, obviously uh, under Conte, great. Won the Premier League. Really good offensive left wing back. And he started under Sari. Sari had that famous quote of he could be, he's probably the best left back in the world. And that same, in that same season, he drops him for Emerson and Emerson becomes the starting left back and starts in the final you know in the Europa League and plays all the games towards the end of the season so from left best left back in the world to you know second to Emerson who's just a fairly decent serviceable left back Uh, of course Lampard comes in he utilizes him they fall out I think it's the West Brom game where he refused to sit with the team and Lampard didn't like that and he like shut him out 
and then it comes back in to play left wing back for Tuchel uh, immediately. Then obviously gets benched for Chilwell because Chilwell's a lot better. Um, and then comes back in and plays some good games again. So it's been an interesting ride for Marcus Alonso. Um, I'm thankful for him because he's a, he a good deal. I don't think we ever planned on using him as much as we did. And generally his tenure's been good. He got two contracts out of Chelsea and it looks like if he goes off to La Liga to Barcelona, he'll get a good contract out there to like, you know, sort of live out his days, you know, <laughs> put him out to pasture. So best of luck to him if he does go. Uh, and of course... We're waiting for official announcements to hear that uh, Todd Bowley's consortium has been uh, cleared to purchase Chelsea. Um, and yeah, there's plenty of articles out analysing him. When he's announced, I'll do a sort of a, a bit more of a sort of in-depth video. I'll react to maybe a, a little bit more of a, an, an insightful piece to give you more information about what he will bring. Um, but people are talking about a statement signing because, of course, they're spending a lot of money to buy Chelsea, but they're buying Chelsea, which is in a, despite the sanctions, in a strong position in terms of in the Champions League. One of the European elite clubs just won the Champions League. Um, we've got some elite players and you're buying a club of absolutely no debt, which is you know, rare to non-existent, 1.5 billion wiped away. They have to, uh, they's basically part of the purchasing deal. They've had to say they're going to commit X amount of money. And with that, when they arrive, they'll have to do some statement signing PR stuff. They will just have to do that. Like, you know, they probably would have tried to sign Rudiger down if he hadn't already gone. Like with the aforementioned Reese James, Mason Mount, new deals. You can imagine those guys get go those guys getting on new deals. And then um, a statement signing maybe. Maybe selling Romelu Lukaku at a cut rate. Um, although, you know, despite Rom just looking like he's in a, a nightmare that doesn't fit him, he still might have a small part of him that wants to just listen to the new owners and see what they say to him. Although the new owners would want to absolutely maybe even give Tuchel a new deal. And uh, as long as Tuchel's hanging around, you have to think that Lukaku ain't got much of a chance um so people are talking about strikers selling Lukaku at a cut rate and making statement signings people are talking about Harry Kane and if Conte leaves Tottenham which by the way well oh, excuse me by the way there are articles out this morning people reflecting on how there could be a clean break there then maybe Chelsea could buy Harry Kane possibly of course darwin nunez an insane goal record we've done a video on him here we've looked at his scouting report and his goals returned it's absolutely mental he is a uh, elite goal scorer but again we have to move on from this perspective of oh we're just going to sign them because they scored our goals and people are talking about them we have and we have to move into a new age of and hopefully this comes with todd Bowley. analyze the data bring it to the scouts to the coach and talk about which player fits the philosophy and the idea. If you don't get anything out of Romelu Lukaku for £97.5 million, at least learn a valuable lesson. See it as like a paid-for valuable lesson of, all right, this didn't work. We need to make sure all from now on we're really stringent with our profiling of our players. And with that might come a statement signing. To be honest, I think it's more likely than unlikely. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, who would you sign? Do you think there'll be a statement signing? And please do react to all the other content in today's video. Of course, if anything comes out. In the meantime, I'll react to it. So ensure that you are subscribed. And uh, yeah, take care. Peace. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love you, bitch